Welcome to Sips and Spirits, a podcast for those who love spirits of both the alcoholic and spectral kinds. I am Chelsea, one of your co-hosts. And I'm our co-host, Eric. A <laughs> uh, little disclaimer before we get started. We are not historians of any kind. Any facts or stories presented from are from various sources, and we make no claims that these stories are true. We just found them to be spooky and interesting. We are not professional mixologists. However, we have created a special cocktail inspired by today's cryptid selection. Before we jump into our cryptid, let's talk a little bit about what we've been haunting behind the bar. What, be, what we've been haunting? What, what haunted happenings have been going on behind the bar? Like, are you haunting or something haunting us? <laughs> <laughs> what we've been haunting? Haunting. I'd, what are what are our haunted happenings there going go. on? I don't know. What's the first one? All right. So we do want to send a little belated Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Uh, by the time this episode airs, Mother's Day will have just passed on Sunday, and this episode comes out on Thursday. So there we go. Happy Mother's Day to all those ladies who are uh, giving birth, those who haven't, and uh, those who just are mothers because some people need to be, have mothers around them. Any and all the moms. Yes. The moms people. You're all amazing. Yep. Because if you're listening to us, especially with a glass in your hand, you deserve that glass in your hand. Yes, you do. So you got it, Mama. Hang in there. There you go. (laughs) How's our spooky Mama doing? I'm doing great. Yeah? You sure? I'm hanging in there. Hanging in there. Okay. (laughs) Fantastic. Uh, I'm here, aren't I? (laughs) (laughs) You are so fun. Excited for my drink. I know, right? It was so fun. Mm -hmm. It was a fun little cocktail. Yes. What else we got going on? We went to my Kai again. Yes, we did. And I totally forgot to grab the swizzle stick. Mm -hmm. They had... So we... Ordered quite a few new drinks. They have a set of new drinks. I think it was six. They had about, yeah, I think about, about six. six new. So they had a new menu, mm-hmm. drink cocktail menu going on. And it was really neat to see it after just having been there the month before. Unfortunately, Tyrone's drinks are not there yet. But they have a they have another menu, yeah, a American. secret menu coming out. Yeah, so, so Tyrone, when you get those out, let us know. Yeah. We're going to swing by. I'll try your cocktails that you made. Yeah, we really want to try your cocktail, Tyrone. Kind of thing. Uh, but uh, so uh, one but, thing I want to say about those cocktails is, so there's two that I tried. Two that I tried? One that I tried. And at least one that I remember I tried. I'm not a fan of coconut flavored liquids. Mm-hmm. I like coconut. I'll drink coconut juice straight from the coconut, but when it's like processed, I guess, I'm not a fan of it mm-hmm. at all. So like coconut cream. So when I see like a cocktail has coconut cream or coconut rum or something, I'm like. You tend to shy away I, from I it. I tend to go away from it just because the, the coconut is too artificial to me. It just doesn't taste, doesn't taste good. Um, but the cocktails they had, uh, the cocktails that I had, I forgot which one it was. Mm-hmm. One of them had coconut flavor or something. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? This is pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, we did three whole rounds. Oh, my and God. And we each, well, but we each ordered different drinks each yes. time. So mm-hmm. we got to try almost all the new cocktails, mm-hmm. and they were all really delightful. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely a broad range of cocktails, yes. too. Yes, yes, for sure. Which is always nice, you know? Even though you do have a preference for a certain type of cocktail, I like when they um, do have them very different from each other. Because there's a wide range of cocktail interests. Was the daiquiri the last one I had? Yes. Yes. I had my first daiquiri. Mm-hmm. That was funny because I had a daiquiri, so a little, lack of better words, girly drink. <laughs> Looking what at some it. people might consider. Like, yeah. And then Chelsea is having a tea fun and she looks like she's having a straight up room and like, man, this rolls are switch right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes. but hey, that daiquiri, mm, delicious. The tea punch was Oh, so divine. So once again, thank you, Tyrone. Yeah. Great job with co- mixing those cocktails. Can't wait to go back to this more. Yes. And I feel like every time we go to Mackay, mm-hmm. it's a new discovery. Oh, yes. Hey, what's up, cat? <laughs> <laughs> we have a little uh, visitor. <laughs> our, our, our own special cryptid from home. <laughs> so, yes, we have talked about you quite a few times. Yes, but <laughs> you scared me a few times, too. Okay. Can we come down? <laughs> There we go. There's cocktails up here. Let's go down. So we were seated in a different part of the restaurant yes. this time around. It wasn't the bar right at the front. It was actually the bar towards the back of the restaurant. And we discovered that area actually rotates it's in the a restaurant. Bar. 
So it was very, very interesting. Very interesting. And they have a party room or a reserved special room. Yeah. That I want to find out how to reserve because it looks really cool in there. Oh, yeah. We just kept getting glimpses every time mm-hmm. we rotated around. It's like, what else is in there? <laughs> At one point, this is a good beginning of us being sitting there. So, like, we had maybe like half a cocktail us. And I'm sitting down and I'm looking at the bar and I'm like, I keep looking at the section and it's not rotating, but I know we're moving. And then I realized, wait, that's moving with us. Ah, uh, we're all moving together. That was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? Well, that's like how we were people watching. I kept looking for a certain couple mm-hmm. and I'd be looking at the spot that I first saw them. Mm-hmm. Not like I knew we were all rotating, but in my mind, my you mind was, like was pro- processing it as just you, you and, and I were moving, <laughs> not oh, everyone else. What is this, three of Sam's? <laughs> Only our chairs are raising. <laughs> yeah, that's what it felt like, sinking. <laughs> sinking, raising. <laughs> chairs are moving. But yeah, so Makai was another awesome visit. And one of Eric's cocktails came with a really neat little bone-shaped swizzle. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll have to share a picture here since yes. I don't have it to lift up at the video. But yeah, yeah I, I'm loving Makai, all the branding you're doing and the refining of your menu. And it's neat to see it changing up too. Yeah. So I'm not sure how, got, how long, many times you have to change it since we've been there or before we got there. But so far, so good. You guys that were in the Santa Cruz area, definitely check it out. Yeah. Swing by Makai, especially if you want a little, a good, um, nice and mm-hmm. mellow tropical escapism. Escapism, Because even though it was busy, it didn't feel it. No, yeah. And, you know, back to something you said earlier, all the variety of drinks, their whole menu is very, like there's a little bit for everything for there mm-hmm. there you know there's classic it's not all rum cocktails no the classic mai tai drinks but then they have other stuff they have some tequila drinks they have some bourbon drinks and it's just it's all over a place but in a good way mm-hmm. kind of thing so it's like if there's something for everybody there and if not ask the bartender ask tyrone if we can make something for you that's what chelsea did ask for a tea punch he didn't know how to make one he found out mm-hmm. and it came out fantastic tyrone's a very great bartender out there yeah, well, and, you know, I have to shout out to all the other waiters and bartenders as well, because even though we weren't serviced by them, um, everyone really worked well as a team. Yes. You didn't get any sense of animosity mm-hmm. or, like, different vibes. Everyone yeah. was always watching each other's back, or it's like, hey, I see that person is looking to get a cocktail mm-hmm. made. Can you check in on them while I get these drinks made or yeah, whatnot? Yeah. So it was really like, and I love to see that mm-hmm. um, because y- too, you too want harmony times, <laughs> yeah, I, you, behind your Too many bar. times you see in other restaurants, bigger restaurants, where it's like, oh, this is just my side. Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. It's just like, eh, yeah, it, it's my station. You know, it, it turns and you they, off a little they bit. have their stations, but they were all really looking out for each other. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, kind of part of that, what we love with the tiki vibe when we find a good tiki place. Yes. So. We were, that's what we look for mm-hmm. um, because we want it to kind of be our home escape from home. Yeah, kind of. Did. Uh, so we want that harmony <laughs> and that peacefulness because that, 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 that drama can like seep out to your patrons as well. Yeah. And it also like, you know, it just helps to you the way you serve things and it's just, you know, overall, but it's like I said, great place, great food, great staff, neat location kind of thing. So Maybe we get a chance to. Yeah. Check it out. All right. What else? And then just recently in April, if you guys missed it, we did a Instagram live where we did a tasting of all of Crystal Head vodka's different flavors. I almost said Crystal Head rum. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal Head rum, Crystal Head tequila. <laughs> Crystal Head vodka. Right. So we tried their Aurora, their Onyx, and their original flavors. Mm -hmm. And that was a really fun time. Thank you to everybody who joined in and hung out with us. And uh, when I said that, we made all our original cocktails. Mm -hmm. Not all. We made each of those. all of the. Well, each of those made one of our original cocktails. Yeah. So we paired each of the different Crystal Head vodkas with one of our original cocktails. And one of them was this one. Yes. So that's the one that we're just about to reveal. Mm -hmm. But it was a really good time. And Mm -hmm. if those who joined in really enjoyed it, let us know. We have plans to do more, but we want to know if people were like... Yeah, that was cool. That's yeah, cool. want to do more of these or, hey, there's a specific spirit series we want to try mm-hmm. or that you guys are interested in us trying. Yeah. We're happy to 
make that sacrifice for we'll, you. We'll venture for you guys and give you our tips and tricks mm -hmm. on it. And uh, if you have a similar taste buds as we do, then be like, okay, they they see I like this and they like this. Maybe they'll like this yeah. too. And if you're interested on watching how that turned out, we do have it on our Instagram. You head over to the uh, little the play button uh, tab on our profile and it'll pull up the live replay of that. Mm -hmm. So you guys can uh, get an idea of all the fun that happened. All the fun that happened that day. Yeah. Kind or even do, you didn't have time to collect all your Crystal Head Vodka bottles then. Right. <laughs> you can do it now. There we go. There we go. Oh, Lord, or when you're ready. When you're ready. Enjoy. All right. Have a fun so time. on that note, we ready to go in and reveal our cryptid. Our cryptid. Yeah. I'm ready for this. Ready for this little little bad boy. Here's what he is. <laughs> all right. So our cryptid and cocktail this episode is called the Puck Wudgie. Puck Wudgie. We did not have anyone guess from the Cryptid Dr. Seuss this time, mm -hmm. but hopefully people will still keep try giving them a listen and guessing them out because if you do guess it correctly, we shout you out here. Hey, who knows? Maybe I'll still shout you out if you had a different guess. There we go. Hey, try. Yeah. Doesn't hurt to try. Not done at all. No shame here. We're just having fun. Mm -hmm. And we're ready to toast with this Pukwaji, yeah? Okay. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Let's go. Oh, I almost lost my whole drink. I'm like, how do I drink this? <gasps> oh, wow. Share mine. Try it. Taste mine. It's a lot more lemony. Mm. So we ran out of the. Lavender, Lavender simple. simple syrup. Mm -hmm. um, we were like a quarter of an ounce short for Eric's. <laughs> yep. So we just did, uh, we added a quarter of an ounce extra of the uh, lemon juice, regular syrup and the lemon juice mm -hmm. to balance it. To what we were talking, to try and make it as close as possible. Mm -hmm. So his might have a little different taste. Different taste. It still tastes good though. I'm going to taste some of yours. Oh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mine's a lot sweeter. Now we used when I was originally testing out this cocktail, mm -hmm. I did we did a homemade lavender simple syrup because we have lavender growing in our yard. We had at the time mm -hmm. when we were testing out this cocktail. So I made a large batch of lavender simple syrup because I really wanted the floral notes in the cocktail. But we ran out and I remembered that I happened to have a little bottle of little sample bottle of Monin lavender syrup. So sure. we gave that a try. I think it's a little sweeter than how mine turned out. Um, but still pretty close. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have lavender available to you or you're not comfortable trying to make your own lavender simple syrup, Monin is a good substitute for that. Okay. It doesn't throw off the flavor too much. So you ready to go ahead and... Read this bad boy out? Mm -hmm. Of course I am. So once again, cards come from Class of Cryptids. Take from Afterlife Comics, published from the UK. And this is the Pug Wudgie. This troll looking. It's like a <laughs> troll and like a gremlin. Like put together. Hmm. Like those like rock and roll trolls and then like gremlins from the gremlin movie. Grab those together. Get that. Rock and roll trolls? You know, like trolls. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Not like a under the bridge troll, but like... No, like the the trolls from the 80s yeah, like, with like the like, gemstone in the like, tummy like giant hair trolls yes yeah. gotcha anyway native americans believed that pukwudgie were once friendly to humans but then turned against them and the and are the best left alone they're known to kidnap people push them off cliffs attack their victims with short knives and spears and use sand to blind their victims nasty little buggers nasty little buggers yeah so, with that very uh, interesting descriptor in mind, yes, um, our cocktail contains two ounces of death door, death door gin. Oh no, it's happening again! Finally, we made a cocktail. Yeah, we made one of our cryptid. Well, this is our second cryptid cocktail, second cocktail. using spirits that were featured on our podcast. Okay, there we go. So we are going to be better about that, guys. So yes. if you've been hoping to like you picked up some of the spirits that we've tasted and you've been hoping to see what we make cocktails wise mm -hmm. out of them we're going to be better about that promise or you finish them off with what we made the first time and then you know, <laughs> something else different we got you yeah so we use death store for the gin in this 
Mm -hmm. Um, So you might want to try to find a similar style gin if that's what you're, if you want to get it closer to the flavor, you can't find Dust Door or it's like not your favorite pick. That's fine. I really enjoy Dust Door. So this is actually my second bottle of this. (laughs) Um, We also had one ounce of lavender simple syrup. A half a lemon, which is about a half an ounce of lemon juice if you don't have lemon or you pre-juice your lemons. Mm-hmm. Um, and then about a teaspoon. It's like a scrape of honey, a, a scoop of honey. We didn't really measure it, but I'm estimating it's about a teaspoon size of honey. And then garnished with honeycomb and a sprig of fresh lavender. That's the ingredients in the cocktail and the reason we picked some of these i turned my thing without turning the page no, no. <laughs> i have to make a comment before we continue i feel really stiff because i'm feeling my chair wiggle more and more <laughs> so i gotta <laughs> tighten that up <laughs> so if i look stiff i'm not like uncomfortable just trying to make sure my chair is breaking the this episode. it should be okay it should be good <laughs> we just gotta tighten it up yeah. it's not that loose but I'm, I'm, I'm sure it feels really it feels really loose for me right now now, I'm going to make a comment. Mm. Well, I think the lavender is pretty to have. That's all it is. It's for visual. So the my... lavender has no other purpose. Let's get some away. Um, well, and I didn't do a really good job. You're supposed to s- kind of stick the lavender into the honey. Mm. And it was there, but I didn't stick it in deep enough. So it slipped out. <laughs> slipped out. Oh, well. Yeah. So, um, our inspiration behind our cocktail, we chose Dust Door because it does have more earthy floral flavors. It's not, it's not, not floral, but it's, it's more of that earthy juniper, um, to kind of represent like the forest that you Mm -hmm. might stumble across a Pukwudgie in. Um, I went with the lavender because the Pukwudgie, as Eric will go into more detail on, it has been associated to have some sort of floral scent to it. So I re- it was really important to me that we figured out how to get a lavender scent. It might because be ugly. lavender is really <laughs> potent. It might be yeah. ugly, but it still smells <laughs> it good. It smells pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, we selected the honey because it plays into the idea of how a pukwudgie will stick and follow its victim after it encounters them. Mm-hmm. So. That's where the honey kind of ties in. And then it just, it was that missing element we needed for the cocktail we were trying to make. And it really, I think, really bonds it all together. Um, Naturally, we use the lemon as a souring agent. So we're not overpowered with all the sweetness from the honey and the simple syrup. Um, But it's, it doesn't have any special representation for that. Just help make the cocktail. Help finish it up. Round it. Well Round rounded. It kind of um, so yeah, if you are interested in trying this cocktail yourself and don't want to have to keep listening to us over and over to get the recipe right, you can find the recipe on our website. As always, all our original recipes are under the cocktails section of our website. You'll see it in the top menu bar. Uh, just click on that. And as you listen to this episode, it should be the first cocktail up on top if not you can scroll through all our original cocktails are listed under that page yeah yep so that's it for me with the the cocktails are you ready Mm -hmm. now that we've filled your glass with spirits it's time to fill your ears with some spookiness or some stuff like there (laughs) before we get started i'm going to give a warning uh on this episode there is mention of suicide in today's episode so if that's a trigger for you some kind of way uh, I recommend you skip some uh, around this part or skip it all completely. Just Maybe wanna... give a warning for the story that contains it? It's more the description. Oh, okay. Description has a, a talk about it kind of thing. Okay. So I forgot where in the story, when the description is, it is. So <laughs> we're going to put like a little, like we'll, 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 we'll put like a, like a 10 second warning or something on our, our video. Mm-hmm. It's something like that. Once again. So the Pugwudgies are legends from before European settlement. So way before Europe came here. Their story spans through many different tribes, from the Wampanoag tribes of Massachusetts to southern New England to the Algonquian tribes of the Great Lake region. According to various legends, it is best to leave this creature alone. 
Don't touch them. Just what? Don't mess with them. Just let them be. If you see it, <laughs> don't see get them? closer. Just keep walking. Don't get curious. Just go like, you stay there. Pug wedges translates to person of the wilderness. Small creatures ranging from knee high to about three feet tall. So somebody small on you. <laughs> With human-like features, yet sporting large ears, noses, and fingers. Their skins have been described as gray and smooth, and they have often been compared to trolls or goblins. The small creatures also have a variety of tricks up their sleeves to taunt or harm humans. They have a sweet smell like flowers. Like leprechauns, pug wedges are capricious. Capricious, yes. Capricious. Mm -hmm. Their powers vary from tribe to tribe. A human who annoys a pug wedgie might be the victim of some unpleasant trickery, but they might also be heavy pushed off a cliff, shot with fire arrows, or have their children stolen. This <laughs> goes a lot of It just <laughs> escalates. Pug wedges can also create fire or orbs that lure people into deep woods to their doom. They can turn invisible and in some stories transform into dangerous creatures like cougars. <laughs> uh, cougars. Sorry. <laughs> well, Not those kind of cougars, <laughs> honey. Kind of cougars. <laughs> I, when, I, when, I, when I first read it, I, I saw the same thing and then I was like, yeah, cougars. One of the most frightening is the rumor that they had the power over the spirits of the people they have killed. Some believe they're benign uh, and even helpful to humans in some cases mischievous but harmless in other cases they were murderous according to a wampanoag legend it has said that the creature originally got along well with humans but were distracted by their relationship with maushop a giant kind spirited deity who created the land mass we know no we now know as cape cod the jealous pug watch you were offended they, they weren't as well loved as maushop and began to cause more and more mischief. After the Wapanoa had talked with Maushop's wife, Maushop exiled the pug wedges and forced it, forcibly spread them far and wide throughout North America. However, many of the pug wedges found their way back and instigated a more belligerent relationship with humans and Maushop, eventually killing Maushop's five sons. Some stories even suggest they killed Maushop himself. These legends coincide with giants appearing of the Wapanoa folklore. One that mentions the pug wedges in literature comes from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow poem, The Song of Hiawatha. Far and wide among the nations spread the name and fame of Kwasin. No man dared to strive with Kwasin. No man could compete with Kwasin. But the mischievous pug wedges, they, the envious little people, they, the fairies and the pygmies, plotted and conspired against him. If this hateful Kwasin, said they, if this great, outrageous fellow goes on and does a little longer, tearing everything he touches, rendering everything to pieces, filling all the world with wonder, what becomes of Pugwudgies? Who will care for the Pugwudgies? He will treat us, treat, tread us down like mushrooms, drive us all into the water, give our bodies to be eaten by the wicked Nibanao banks, by the spirits of the water. So the angry little people, all conspired against a strong man. All conspired to murder Kwasin. Yes, to rid, to rid the world of Kwasin. The audacious, overbearing, heartless, haughty, dangerous Kwasin. Now, this wondrous strength of Kwasin. In his crown alone was seated. In his crown, too, was his weakness. There alone could he be wounded. Nowhere else could a weapon pierce him. Nowhere else could a weapon harm him. Even there, the only weapon that could harm would wound him that it could slay him was the seed cone of a pine tree, the blue cone of a fir tree. This was Kwasin's fatal secret. Known to no man among mortals, but the cunning little people, the Pagwajis, knew the secret, knew the only way to kill him. So they gathered cones together, gathered seed cones of a pine tree, gathered blue cones of a fir tree. In the woods by Taquamena, brought them to the river margins, heaped them in great piles together, where the red rocks from the margin, judging over, hang the river. There they lay in wait for Kwasin, the malicious little people. It was an afternoon in the summer, very hot, and still the air was very smooth in the gliding river. Motionless the sleeping shadows, and glistening in the sunshine, and skated, skated on the water, filled the drowsy air with buzzing, with a far reassuring war cry. Down the river came the strong man. His birch canoe came Kwasin, floating slowly down the current, 
of the sluggish Tacomena, the very languid with the weather, very sleepy with silence, from the overhanging branches, from the tassel of the birch trees, soft the spirits of the sleep descended, by his airy house surrounded his invisible at attendants, came the spirit of sleep, Nepawin, ne like a burnished duck no duck no nesha, like a dragonfly he hovered. Or the drowsy head of Kosin, to his ears came the, a murmur. As the waves upon the seashore, as far tumbling waters, as the wing among the pine trees, and he felt up upon his forehead, blows the little airy war clouds, wielded by the slumber legions of the spirit of sleep, Nipawin, as, as of some one breathing on him, as the first blow of the air war, war clubs, Fall drowsiness of Kwasin, and the second blow smote him, motionless his paddle rested, as a third before his vision, reeled the last came into darkness. Very sound asleep was Kwasin, as he floated down the river, like a blind man seated upright, floated down the Takwamanan, underneath the trembling birch trees, underneath the wooden head plants, underneath the war encampment of the pygmies, the Pagwajis, there they stood, all armed and waiting. Harold the pike was down upon him, struck him on his brawny shoulders, on his crown defense and struck him. Death to Kwasin was a sudden war cry the little people. As he sideways swayed and tumbled, sideways fell into the river, plunged beneath the sluggish water, head along as the other plunges, and the birch canoe, abandoned, drifted empty down the river. Bottom upwards swerved and drifted, nothing more was seen of Kwasin, but the memory of the strong man Lingered long among the people, and were never through through the forest, raged and roared the whining tempest, and the branches toasted and troubled, creaked and groaned the split surrounding. Quasin cried they, that is Quasin, he is gathering his firewood. What is he gathering the firewood for? I don't know. I can read more behind what it was. <laughs> like this is always like a long thing. So yeah, it was, and a lot, like I kind of got it, but. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Like so, like uh, it, you have the pygmies, so they associate the Pakwajis, not not like any relation, but they're like the same idea as a pygmy. Like yeah. they they hang out together. Yeah, yeah. So very interesting. Yeah. Uh, I didn't hear about that before. Kwasin, the that tale. I missed it earlier. Do you know where that poem came from? Like yes. what tribe or oh, no, area? No, I don't know what tribe it is, but I know who wrote it. Or yeah, who was the person who wrote it? Uh, Henry Wasworth Longfellow, poem of the Song of Hiawatha. Hiawatha? Hiawatha. The Song of Hiawatha. Yeah. Interesting. So, just like the earlier description about, about from the Wampanoag, mm -hmm. Pukwudgies seem to be very jealous creatures who once somebody else stands on you know on the th on popularity uh -huh. they're like we need to get rid of it because what's gonna happen to us it it almost makes me think of like those um i don't know if you'd say stories or adaptations were kind of uh like a, an ancient creature starts to get forgotten mm -hmm. right the times are changing becoming more modernized less of the worship it had before so then it changes its approach to get the worshiping so it the pakwajis are kind of doing the same thing where they're getting rid of what the new thing is to worship mm -hmm. so they don't get forgotten um because i think we've kind of talked about that before where it's like how many ancient creatures or beings out there that wander the forest and and the 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 meadows and the plains mm -hmm. and whatever those those old lands yep. that are still around that I'm sure have tons of tales but that just have not been passed on These. from oral to written to documented histories mm -hmm. that are still like affecting people and mm -hmm. things like I think about some of the stories we've heard with like people who lost time in the forest and the 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 noise suddenly going silent, dead mm -hmm. silent, and the forest is never quiet. Mm -hmm. Like those kinds of things. So that question I is, think about like the Pakwaji somehow really relates to that a lot mm -hmm. in my mind. 
And, and the question lies like because there's some theories that if you keep stories, you give them power. So by taking away the stories, do they no longer exist? Mm. Kind of thing. Right. So why wouldn't they want to destroy the next thing yeah. so they don't get forgotten? Because mm -hmm. right, I I feel like a lot of a lot of cultures have that belief of you give something a name or you believe in it and you give it power. There's lots of different, not just like cultures, but religious practices and beliefs. There are actual like cryptid beings or mythological beings that do thrive on the yeah. number of worshippers yeah. and stuff like that, right? Yeah. It gives it power. The more followers you have, <laughs> the more Instagram <laughs> puts you out there. <laughs> the more, mm. <laughs> the more cryptic, uh, cryptic, mm. gam. How do you, what do you call it? A cryptid Instagram. Cryptogram. Cryptogram. <laughs> the more followers you have, the more you uh, you pop up on other people's <laughs> feed <laughs> to oh. hunt them. All right. Um, I did have a question. This is my uh, Celtic. Before you start, oh, you want, uh, you want a oh yeah, more? you have a little more. I'm I sorry. Have a little more, more for this. <laughs> Pugwudgies are tied to specific locations, even today. Many reports signified come from woods of the Massachusetts area. In fact, in the town of Freetown, Massachusetts, they have a, put a Pugwudgie crossing sign near the Freetown State Park. State Forest. Sorry. Now, before we read the next paragraph. Field trip, right? I know. What. Let's go check it out. I want to take a picture with the... Uh, that would be so fun. With the um, pug wedgie sign. That'd be cool. we take a picture with the card. we be like, ah, look at this guy. Um, I must mention earlier, here's my uh, suicide uh, talk. So if you want to skip it out, skip this paragraph. Yeah, about a minute. About yeah. a minute or so. Freetown is a state park located in the Fall River, Freetown, and Lakeview. Lake Vile, Lake Vile, Massachusetts. Fall River has already has its fair share of violent rumors due to its infamy as the longtime home of Lizzie Bourdain, Borden, who was suspected of murdering her father and stepmother with an axe in the 1890s. Huh. A hundred foot cliff known as the ledge overlooks the quarry. There have been several suicides at the ledge. Some say the Puckwedges are to blame for luring people to their deaths. Though police find Pogwitch is a joke or prank, people who have sight us feel different. One Massachusetts woman reported seeing Pogwitch in the forest who continued to pester her by tapping on her window at night as she slept. The mysterious creature is also rumored to have been sighted near West Virginia, haunting Moundsville State Penitentiary, as well as in Round Rock, Texas, home of the Bigfoot. This guy's getting all over the place. But, as I already said earlier, Malshop took him out of the East Coast Said go everywhere else. Uh huh. So they some of them settled there, some of them came back. Ooh. Pogwudgie also appear in the Harry Potter series. The creature no, n now acts as a symbol on the house of Ilver Ilver Ilvermorny Ilver Ilver There we go. School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, the American version of Hogwarts. Mm hmm. And that's all I have. Yeah. I just got goosebumps with that last one, like th with the woman who claims mm -hmm. to be annoyed, harassed by the Bukwudji. I don't know why. It just like really gave me goosebumps. Mm -hmm. So they could be right behind your back door. So any reports of <laughs> Bukwudjis in Virginia, if they're in West Virginia, <laughs> asking for a friend. I, I, I was, I was, when I was reading it, when I was reading that part, at a different location, like they're, well, there's a lot of cryptic sightings, like Bigfoot, you know, Curse of the Jersey Devil, and all the other, like, big Mothman kind of thing. There's usually Pugwudges around there as well. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, in a sense... They don't want to get forgotten, huh? In a sense, they want to be part of this. They were like, oh, this guy's known. Let's hang out here. People see us. He'll talk about us. Or they want to overthrow them. So, don't bug the Pugwudges, but let's talk about them more. So, maybe yeah. they'll be a little nicer, guys, yeah, okay? If you guys, you know... Fluff them up and be like, hey, you're cool. I like you. You're funny. Then they'll stop being evil and then be good to humans again. And they hang out with us. I really hate you. Why? <laughs> no. Well, because you said fluff them up. Uh -huh. And I have a very innocent mind. However, we were recently having a discussion about what a fluffer is. Yes. And then I was like, in what sense do you mean fluffing the puckwudgie? I don't mean it. Girl. <laughs> 
I'm just saying. That was all her. <laughs> it was all me, but this is because of a conversation you started. Fluffed her, e- fluffed her ego. That's what I, I meant. I, no, that's what I was no. hoping you meant. But because I had that conversation in my the back of my mind, it came through when you said fluff. Sorry. <laughs> I, I just had to get it out. I had to brain vomit it. Also, ego can be taken as a different way. <laughs> Fluffing their ego. Can be taken your way. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> See, and this is why... Mm-hmm. I am the more innocent one because I was like, what? <laughs> what? I don't get it. I was just talking about something, but I'm just repeating what was told to me. I was cleaning my car with her we car with her vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. Was, no, we have to share that in our stories. I was, I was cleaning my ride with her ride. I got to find that to share with you. Yeah. So when this episode comes out, I'll share it in the stories. But it was really funny. Eric found this great little reel of oh, this guy. I don't know where it is. I got to find it. But anyway. We can find it. The internet search button is an amazing tool. Um, this guy is cleaning a car off. It's covered in snow with a broom. Mm-hmm. And he's like, my wife's going to be so mad when she finds out that I was cleaning my vehicle with her vehicle. I was cleaning my ride with her ride. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the people watching, like I saw as a reaction video, people watching like, I don't get it. And I was like, his ride's a car. Her ride's a broom. Who rides brooms? <laughs> His wife's a witch. He's calling his wife a witch. I'd probably call her the other word, but he meant it. <laughs> but yeah. it was still very funny with a spooky mind. Yes, spooky mind. Kind of <laughs> but yeah, no. That, that, so the uh, overall, the was interesting. Uh, learning a little about it. Uh-huh. Uh, because I'm not a Harry Potter fan. I, I didn't know they were part of the Harry Potter world. Well, and honestly, like the American version of Hogwarts in the book series, at least, the original seven books Mm -hmm. that i read (laughs) um they weren't really discussed much Mm -hmm. even when they do like the goblet of fire the american school doesn't participate in that there's other schools Mm -hmm. um two other schools i think it's been a while since i read it uh but so they kind of briefly talk about it and i do kind of remember it but it's such a like tiny little paragraph yeah. out of seven giant books not giant but they get thicker and thicker with each new and book. that's why they're mad little creatures they just a little they paragraph. were like what is this little blip you talk <laughs> about you spent a lot of time on a bogart <laughs> <laughs> um so i did have some questions okay for it i'll see uh, if we can answer them yeah so or just like notes, comments, not necessarily questions. Mm-hmm. But so you said that some Pukwudgies are noted in, in some lores of Pukwudgies that they can create fires, like little fireballs. Yes. Um, Like floating fire, like, right? Like fire sort of orbs. And I was like, my Celtic heritage mind was like, like wills of the wisps. Mm-hmm. Cause I was thinking like floating orbs that like you see like in the forest. like well, Those are, those are called will o' wisps. Will o' Will of the Wisps. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I was like, oh, I didn't know that Pukwudgies could be associated with those. That's kind of well, they're Well, um, aren't Will of the Wisps associated with Fae Folk? Mm-hmm. Aren't Will of the Wisps? Some, yeah. Yeah, so then they're associated with like fairies. N- there's different like variations, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and then that's why earlier when you were talking about the pygmies mm-hmm. and I had that like, oh, mm-hmm. oh. And then you were talking about, you had the fireballs and then you were talking about the pygmies and I was like, oh. Ooh, hey, wait, are the Pukwudgies? Because you said they're like, kind of like. We say it over and over again. So many similarities. Mm, 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 mm. And remember. And this this is already established lore. lore. This is coming from the native Mm, lands and peoples. Native Americans, the Wampanoagan people there. Not from Europeans. Yes. People bringing their stories over. These were here already. Mm -hmm. So the Pukwudgies like. So come on, guys! You can't tell me like these kinds of creatures don't. <laughs> so I thought <laughs> it's, it's a faithful <laughs> convention or faithful family reunion, and it's Tinkerville talking to a pugwudgie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! We need a drawing of it. We need oh some. my god! That That's funny. so funny. Okay, and then second, just like kind of past my mind mm-hmm. thing was you said. um they could control the, they had power over the spirit of yes. their victims, right? And I couldn't help but think of our Deadhead episode mm-hmm. where the uh, indigenous tribes who did the shrunken heads, they believed that by shrinking the head, they had the power, they trapped the spirit 
of that person. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, that's an interesting similarity too. Yep. Or just something that came to mind. So I don't know. Take from that what you will. And yeah. So. No, I mean, when we first saw this creature, and we were like, I have no idea what this thing is. And I, the more I looked into it, like, well, this is actually pretty Really neat. interesting, right? You kind of think. And it's, you found a lot of stuff. Yeah, you know, and so like there was a lot of, a lot of different things from it, um, aspects and, and whatnot. And um, it was just it was just so fun to find things about it. And so I, I've had this for a while, you kind of thing. And that originally, when I first found the, the poem, mm -hmm. I found this little blip of it, just one paragraph just mentioned the pub budgies. Mm -hmm. But I was like, you know what? Let's find the whole and, and this poem is set up like um the odyssey okay. where it's like like giant poem for each like, section kind right. of thing you know so it's like in you know, a bunch of different like i think it was like 20 different chapters or something i think it's so funny you brought up the odyssey but <laughs> yeah keep going no, but you, 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 get, you get what i'm saying so, so like it's a bunch of different like like stories right, right. no put i together, get it exactly what you mean you know in, into one but kinda, they're broken up in like stanzas yeah it's kind of thing so it, it was kind of it was neat I, I i didn't spend the time to read the rest of it so don't ask me a question this <laughs> and I, think, <laughs> I didn't look more beyond that kind of thing but overall i thought it was kind of cool and you know and like the the most most lores of the of different um and these people all talk about the puck budgets as being this jealous little creatures uh -huh. who as they are being overshadowed they're like oh well, now we're gonna get mad Kind mm -hmm. of thing. And like you mentioned earlier, that's how some things survive. Right. You know, you either adapt or so fascinating. or you overpower. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So field trip to Freetown, Massachusetts. Yes. We got to get a picture with that. We got to get a picture with Pugwaji with our cocktail. Well, that's going to be a little tricky. No, we just got Although it might be easier to find honeycomb there. <laughs> just make a little flask. <laughs> that's true. Okay. So. What's next? What's next? Do -do -do. It's time for a little transformation. Transformation. I was going to try the since you, you weren't happy with creepy Dr. Seuss, I was going to try, how can I uh, spin Edgar Allan Poe to you? Because he's our creepy poet. Well, I never said I wasn't happy with creepy Dr. Seuss. I just feel a little bad mm -hmm. i don't know like taking claim to that when i don't know i love dr seuss so yeah so. i guess i i don't feel like i'm i measure up to that yeah, well, but maybe i'm just selling myself short i mean you, you are tiny like a pug would you ha 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 because mm. i am pretty proud of all these cryptid cocktails mm -hmm. that i've been there you go er, yeah. Not cocktails. What do you call them? Riddles? I mean, we've also made the cocktails, but yes. I have mostly done the cocktails. Oh, rude. Not rude. This one is all me. That one's all you. Yeah. But um, was kind of me. And, uh, it was a combination. Now I'd say Chupacabra. That was predominantly you. Yes. Yeah. I had the idea like way before this thing started. <laughs> before I knew this was a thing, I'm sure. You were like, I had the, the chupacabra element. lined up. All right, so you ready? So should I say the name of the cryptid? No, no. let's not, because then what's the point of having the riddle? Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Do you dare to trudge Pennsylvania's hemlock forest? If so, you may be greeted by a woeful chorus. For beauty is suggestive. For this creature you see, fading into tears at its fade cape, like a puddly banshee. <laughs> this this cryptid's very sad. <laughs> That's all I can say. And I've never heard of it before. <laughs> I'm just, we haven't heard of like most of these before. <laughs> well, like I have heard of the puck wedgie. It just took a little while to jog my memory. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we knew the chupacabra. Oh, besides that one. Well, and I've heard of the Beast of Bray Road, but I didn't know details about it. Oh my God, look at you. You're so smart. No, I just like cryptids, okay? But no, we have, they've, they've mostly been unknown cryptids. Yeah. So, but this one is like, this is a different one, for sure. They'll be pretty different for me. I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were like reading the description like, wait, what? But, uh. So Pennsylvania folks, if you uh, know what we're talking about, shout us out. Yeah, so Hashtag um, Pennsylvania. leave your guess on Instagram on this show's notes, this episode's notes, or via email, contact at sipsandspirits.com. 
Uh, and if you guess what this cryptid is, we'll shout you out in the next cryptid episode. Yeah. Yeah. Our last cryptid episode for this round of episodes. <laughs> yeah, I think. Just a, a little side note when you, you mentioned they're from Pennsylvania. Transylvania is in Pennsylvania? What? Is there a Transylvania in Pennsylvania? Mm. There's a Transylvania in the United States. Where is it at? There is. It is... Not in Pennsylvania. I think it's... I'm trying to think. Because it was in the Monster High novel series. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, they moved to Transylvania mm -hmm. in the USA. I think, I think it's Massachusetts. I think you're right. But I'm not sure. We'll, we'll, make we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back to this. But uh, I've, I've, I've always... I know the Transylvania stories are not in that Transylvania. There are Transylvania in Europe. Transylvania. And, and, and so whenever I, when I found out there's a Transylvania in America, I was like, that's what I was, that's how Dracula's hanging out. <laughs> I was like, no, that's the other one. <laughs> Don't be dumb, Eric. Dracula's hanging out here. He can't cross oceans. Although, but does he? Because a lot of them move <laughs> to the United States, Transylvania. Mm -hmm. I guess they want a better life. They want the American dream. <laughs> <laughs> There's somebody's American dream for sure. <laughs> but yeah, so you want to take a guess on this uh, cryptid. Uh, we share this audio bite on Instagram. Leave a comment there. Leave a guess on our website show notes or send us an email saying, I know what this is. You know what this and is. And maybe share a little bit more about the lore for yeah, us. Yeah, let us know about it because uh, we're going to have fun trying to find information about this. Yeah, bonus points if you do give us some more mm -hmm. information about a cryptid that you guess. But you know, I it was the same thing with the Pugwudgie. Mm -hmm. When we first saw it, we're like, I have no idea anything about this. And so, we we spent some time, I spent some time looking and I found some awesome stuff about mm -hmm. it. So maybe this one comes up. I actually, I have some pretty good, solid ideas I'm excited for for the cocktails. Okay, so. cool. At least you have some ideas. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. You ready for our last call? It is time for, for last, last call. Let's say goodbye. <sighs> anyway, thanks for sipping along with us. Want to keep the spirits flowing? So please be sure to show your support by reviewing and subscribing to our podcast. If you enjoy this show, be sure to share with others. If you know about the scripted, let us know more information. Yeah. If I say something, if I pronounce anything wrong, call me out. You know, I'm not a perfect reader educate us educate us tell me hey you didn't say this right i'm like cool how do i say it we do whatever research we can mm -hmm. but it's only it, it, it is limited by so much because you're not getting a lecture on it you yeah. can't go into a classroom and learn about cryptids i mean i'm sure there are cryptid classes out there but there are. You know, I just go to different websites, see different information, mm -hmm. see what they find interesting, grab different parts of it, and be like, We do okay. try to look up pronunciations of things, mm -hmm. but you don't always get it right, yeah. even then. Yeah. <laughs> so. So, if I made something wrong, let me know. Otherwise, come hang out with us. Come mix up some cocktails. Learn some cocktails things. You know, we make a virgin version of all our cryptic cocktails and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, check them out if you don't drink alcohol, or if you do, enjoy them. So, you know, maybe you've never liked gin. Maybe you can make this cocktail and like gin for the first time. Yeah. You know, the, the, you know, like I mentioned earlier with Makai, just because you don't like something always doesn't mean that you shouldn't give them something to try. We, we I, I, I am not a pursuer of bourbon. I will drink bourbon when it's offered to me. If, it, if a cocktail has bourbon on it, I'll drink it. But it's not like my to-go spirit. Mm -hmm. But Winchester was a very enjoyable bourbon. Yeah. Kind of thing. So, you know, come check us out. Come say hi. Yep. All right. So on that note, if you want to find us, we have a website, sipsandspirits.com, which should answer majority of your questions you might have about us or the podcast um, or any further information, such as our cocktails. And we have a lovely little contact form on the website if you need it. Otherwise, we are available on all podcast hosts. Anywhere you want to listen to or can stream a podcast, we can be found there. We also air these episodes on YouTube. So if you prefer, prefer, prefer a more visual experience for the podcast, here we are. Um, and if not, we are on all social media outlets. It might take us a while on to get back to you on one or another 
Um, but we are definitely very active on Instagram. And um, we do have notifications pop up for us on the other ones. Mm -hmm. So Instagram auto posts to the other ones on our behalf. So reach out wherever you're most comfortable. Um, and that's about it for me. So you ready to close this tab? Let's close this tab out. We hope to catch you around the bar next time. Cheers. Cheers.